Hey, we are on episode five of the Student Book Chats. Uh, we have been out for a lot of days. Let's see, we are on Sunday, what, April 26th. So this is our 45th day that we have been at the uh, on the stay-at-home measure where we are not in school and update from the last video chat that I had with you guys where I said we will be returning soon and we were gonna see how that was gonna all work, but now we've received word that we will not be returning this school year and um, we're all trying to adjust to that news. So I wanted to get back with the book chats and uh, continue giving you some book recommendations to take you out for the rest of the year. And then I'll probably continue doing some this summer because I've really enjoyed them. And I wanna make sure that you always have something checked out. Hopefully you have some books at home, some physical books that you're able to read or that you're able to go on the public library's website, plug in your library card number if you've got one. If you don't, you can easily apply. Get some eBooks, get some audio books, find something that you will enjoy reading and continue reading. You know, I've also talked to you about the fact that I've really struggled to read during this time and I think that I have heard that a lot from my friends, uh, from people that I've talked to, from the students that I've been talking to on Zoom meetings. Uh, we're all just kind of a, to adjust, we're adjusting. There's a lot to deal with. And um, I've started to finally get back into reading. So I wanna to talk to you about some of those too. And I finished reading. In one of the last videos, I talked to you about Sing Unburied Sing. It's by Jesmyn Ward. Um, it's one of Miss Erickson's books. I borrowed from her library before we left because I was reading it with our um, Blanchester staff and friends book club. We have yet to get to meet for um, this book. We were supposed to do it last month and it was happening right at the same time. I think it was like the next week after they were closing down um, schools, but we still hadn't gotten the measure that we had to stay home, but we did not meet for that book club. So we haven't had a chance to talk about this, but I did finish reading it. I would call this a literary novel. I do not have a copy of this in the library yet. Uh, it is a National Book Award winner. So let me see if I can give you a good picture of that right there. And it is also on the 10 best books of the New York Times Book Review in 2017. So a couple of years old there. It's a literary novel in that if you are a reader, if you like novel, and people come in all the time and say, don't think I'm weird, but I want like a really dark novel. Or I want something sad. This is a, it's a troubled novel. The character, the main character is a young boy and he is really struggling. I'm gonna read this little part on the back because that's a really good way to get to know what's in this book and it's, it's stated really well. Part ghost story, part road novel, this historic National Book Award winner is a dazzling journey through Mississippi's past and present in an epic tale of hope and survival. Following a family making the trip from their Gulf Coast town to the Mississippi State Penitentiary, penitentiary, why am I not saying that right? Sing Unvaried Sing tests the strength of all emotional bonds in the pool of our collective history. In a haunted landscape for a family reeling from loss, the trouble is fraught with danger. This gorgeous novel animated by Ward's lush and vibrant language is rich with connection, meaning, and healing. This is one of those books that your English teachers talk to you about beautiful writing. Being able to read beautiful writing will help you become a beautiful writer. Uh, the way that she tells the story of this young boy on a trip with his mother, his sister, his mother's friend, and they are headed to the state penitentiary. Penitentiary. Gosh, why can't I say that word? But they are headed to pick up his father who's being released. And it is so much more than just the story of them driving to pick him up. They are all complicated characters. The main character's name is Jojo, and he is, he, he's been through way more than any child should be. He takes care of his little sister. She knows that he is the one who's taking care of, to, taking care of her. They do live with grandparents, which is also complicated. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. It is written for adults. There is some language in there. There are some situations in there. Um, they are fighting their own demons, but it is a beautiful, beautiful story. If you have yet to read a National Book Award winner, this would be a good one to read. If maybe you're thinking this doesn't sound like it's for you, I still would recommend that you would look up the National Book Award um, and look at some of the winners for the years on those because again, they are really good examples of beautiful writing. So good one to imitate um, when you are trying your own hand at writing. Another one that I um, wanted to point out, 
again, I don't think I have this on the shelf at the library. I don't think we um, were able to order the year that this was the Clinton County Reads, which I think it was last year's Clinton County Reads book, but it's educated. It's a memoir by Tara Westover. Most of the, the books that I'm talking to you about, I've talked to you about this in the past, all my books got packed up. They had to be removed, cleaned, and then came back and I had to unpack them and they're all out of order. So I'm trying to put them in order as I'm unpacking. So that's how I'm giving them to you is as I'm going, as I'm finding them on the shelf, then I'll come and talk to them about you. And I'm I come and talk to you about them. And I am um, talking to you about books that I have here at my house that we also have in the library. That way, you know, when we do go back, then you can still have a list of books that you can walk in and get the physical book if you want to do it that way. Tara Westover's family lives in rural Idaho. Uh, she doesn't step foot into a regular classroom until she's about 17 and basically places herself in college. It's an interesting story of how a family who, um, or how a, a kid who's brought up in that family that's always focused on the end of times, on survival, always focused on everyone is against you, how she's able to go back into society and then find her own way. Um, so it's it's a memoir that I think is very much worth reading. I know a lot of people who've read this book and really appreciated it, so I think it's an easy one to recommend. So there are two. Um, and then let's get started on the regular ones that are just kind of going down the bookshelf. Whoop. Gwenda Bond wrote a series. It's a Lois Lane um, series. The first one in the series is called Fallout. I've only read the first one in the series so far. I think they're probably up till three, but it is a updated retelling of the Lois Lane saga, right? So um, it's a reimagining of Lois Lane, I would say. She is now emailing someone called the Smallville guy. So you can tell it's in this age. It's not back you know, when the, the, the original series took place. So also think like the Veronica Mars, if you're into watching that TV series, kind of brings that in to this. And um, Lois Lane is the main character though. And she, she is an army brat. She's always in trouble. Every school that she's been into, she gets in trouble. So she vows that this is going to, you know, she's going to start fresh. She's going to start new. And then she gets uh, mixed up in seeing a classmate that's being bullied. And that's not in her makeup. She can't, she can't sit back and watch that, so she gets involved. Um, there's definitely some science fiction coming into this particular series. They are in Metropolis. She is working for the good of Metropolis. This is a good YA retelling of the Lois Lane um, saga. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about is Michael Crichton. The one that I have currently on my shelf is Jurassic Park. This is obviously part of a series, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Um, I'm trying to think of which other ones are in our library. It's hard for me to, to tell which, uh, which ones are in our library whenever I'm at home, but I know that we do have Jurassic Park and that we have The Lost World um, in that series. Sometimes if you look in these, they will tell you what other, okay, so Michael Crichton also wrote The Andromeda Strain, The Terminal Man, The Great Train Robbery, Congo, Sphere, Rising Sun. Those are all ones I know that we have in our library. What I really like about Michael Crichton is how he brings the science into his fiction. Um, so you probably already know the story of Jurassic Park. And I think sometimes that turns people off when they come in and they're looking for a good read. And I go to this and I say, have you read Jurassic Park? Like, no, I've seen it 25 times. Why do I need to read it? because it is in depth. It is specific. He goes into detail in how all this works. And um, you, if you are a reader and you like to see your books come to life on the big screen, which I do, but I very, very rarely say it either lives up to the hype or that it is as good as the book. Um, I love the Jurassic Park movies and I love the Jurassic Park books. They're kind of like that Harry Potter world. I think the books are fabulous. I think the movies are fabulous, but there is no way that I would want to miss out on one or the other. And that is how this series is. I love Jurassic Park. I'm not a big science person, so I don't know why, um, but I've probably read, I'd say six-ish of the Michael Crichton books. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's Jurassic Park or Congo or um, Rising Sun is one of my favorite ones, and it's really just a murder mystery, but I love his books. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, he is. He is the author of The Andromeda Strain, which would be a great read for our time right now. Think about um, 
that there, there's something that gets loose that shouldn't, a virus, and how they're fighting that, and then put the science in on that. And that probably came out probably in the 80s, if not the 80s, the early 90s. Like they might be older, but they are still very much worth reading. So pick up a Michael Crichton if you're looking for a good science fiction. It is adult. I don't think I said that. I did tell you that the Lois Lane is young adult, so that is young adult. Educated is a memoir and it is definitely written for adults. There are some, um, you know, some adult themes and things going on in there, but it is a coming of age story. It is her story of growing up in that survivalist family and then getting herself into college and then finding her way in the world. So again, um, I do like to tell you though, if it's, if it's a young adult book or if it's a, an adult book. But even Jurassic Park, even the Michael Crichton, even though they're written for adults, I often have freshmen who've come in and already read some of these. Um, so the next two books go together. They're John Green. These have probably been reviewed and recommended on YouTube and by every librarian that's in a high school and probably even junior high in America. But they are two that I have here that I've read and I do highly recommend. You probably know who John Green is. Um, he definitely writes a specific kind of book. The Fault in Our Stars is probably the one that put him on the map with people who hadn't already read his books. Um, here we go. So I'm trying to think of when this. Let me look and tell you when the this was written in 2012. So we're in 2020, so you can kind of tell. But this is probably my favorite by him, and it's looking for Alaska. It is a Prince Award winner. Let me get that up there for you. Again, if uh, even if this is not one that you think that sounds like it might be for you, I would highly recommend looking up the Prince Award winners. It's an easy way to find young adult books that have won an award for outstanding fiction in their field. And Looking for Alaska is probably my favorite John Green. It is dark. It's sad. Most of his books, if not all, have love interests in them, and they're always complicated love interests. And what I really like about this book is this right here. There is a before and there is an after. And something happens in the middle that moves that book along. So whereas if you're looking at that and you're thinking, I'm not really a reader, how many pages, I get this all the time, how many pages are in that? 221, that's a lot. Well, that's okay because after less than 100 page, no, right after about 100 pages, something's gonna happen that's gonna feel like you're reading a whole new book. And that makes it a lot easier. So highly recommend this. This, again, even though it's written for young adults, it's definitely written for mature young adults. There are some themes going on in there um, that I usually only recommend John Green to sophomores and up. Uh, and we always have that conversation about appropriateness or if you start reading something that makes you uncomfortable or you think it's just it's more than you should be reading, then return it. Let it go to someone else and we'll find something that is more appropriate for you. And I am happy to do that. No judgment zone. Um, and then, of course, The Fault in Our Stars. I don't feel like I need to say a whole lot about this. It's another one that um, most people who come in and get John Green's books, you know what you're looking for. You know that you are going to get a sad story. You know there's going to be a love interest in there. You know that it, they're going to be troubled. They're trying to find their way. These are John Green books, and that's why we enjoy them. They're very much written for young adults. They, they are dealing with young adult issues. They're relatable. And even though I'm saying that, I know a lot of um, older adults who've also read most of John Green's books because they're very good reads. They're enjoyable. Um, another series... I said another series I have. Oh, yeah, well, I guess the Lois Lane is a series. Another series that I'm going to recommend is M Michelle Hodgkin, The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. And this is a book that actually one of my students several years ago asked me if I had read the series, and I hadn't, and then she gave them to me for Christmas, and then I ordered them for the library. It's a fun series. It's a page turner. It is dark. You can see the cover there by the cover there that it's a dark series. Um, there is romance in there. I'm going to read you the back because that, again, sometimes these just say it better than I can. You wake up with no memory of the last few days. Your friends were killed in an accident that you miraculously survived. Your family has to move to another state to escape the fallout. You meet a mysterious boy who seems to know more about your past than you do. You start seeing things that can't possibly be there. You're afraid you're losing your mind. Can you keep it all together? Mara Dyer is about to find out. 
And then um, a lot of these YA books, this is by Simon & Schuster. A lot of these YA books, if you go to YouTube and you type in The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, there'll be a book trailer on there. I'll include that in this video because I think I can link to that. Um, and then, it, so it hasn't been made into a movie, but there's a book trailer on YouTube. The Fault in Our Stars has been turned into a movie. Looking for Alaska is being turned into a movie, if I'm not mistaken. Jurassic Park is a movie. Um, so I will link some of those. It's a good way to know if you're going to like to read the book or not, but it is a good troubled romance. Um, and it feels like it has some fantastical things going on because she doesn't know if they are fantastical or if they're really happening. She is an unreliable narrator because she can't remember what happened. She has survived a horrific accident. And it is a series. So highly recommend that one. Um, the next one is a good, fun, lighthearted read. It is Son of the Mob by Gordon Corman. Again, not very big, nice little paperback. It is funny, and that is really, really hard to find in a high school library. By the time you get to a high school library, you have um, YA books, and a lot of those are romance, fantasy, science fiction. Uh, you don't get a whole lot of realistic fiction that's just funny, and that's Gordon Corman. Um, I enjoy this whole series. There are two, I believe, Son of the Mob and then Son of the Mob Hollywood Hustle, I think. We have both of those in the library. Um, the main character, this is really funny, Vince Luca is just like any other high school guy. His best friend Alex is trying to score vicariously through him. His brother is a giant pain and his father keeps bugging him to get motivated. There's just one thing that really sets him apart from other kids. His father just happens to be the head of a very powerful crime organization. And then, of course, he falls in love. And who does he fall in love with? The daughter of the man who's investigating his dad who's in the mob. And then there's the whole drama of him, whether or not he's going to join the family business or not, and all of his uncles um, and cousins, you know, they're very close and everybody's in the family business and um, he is just trying to date the girl of his dreams and his family always seems to be getting in the way of that. So good, funny, light read, fast read would be a great one to read right now um, during these more serious times. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about today this is another obvious one, Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series. The copy that I have here at home is the paperback, um, and it has the movie picture on the front of it there. Um, this I only have the Twilight one out so far, but you know that there's a series, and I want to say, God, what are there, five or six in this series? Um, this is what got the whole vampire thing started, um, and it's the, the romance of the vampire and the human falling in love. A good, good romance, page turner. I don't think that um, that books always age well, but this book series, I think, ages well. You can always look up the, the movie trailers online. Again, that's a good way to see if you're going to like the book. But it could be because these were published so long ago. <laughs> these were published in 2005. That's so long ago that you may they may have skipped over you. You may have seen them whenever you were like, you know, in fourth or fifth grade, but your mom knew that these were too much for you. Um, or maybe you read the first one or the second one and then you just kind of went away. The whole series is good all the way through the end. This is another one where the books are good, the movies are good, they take some liberties in the movies, but it was a nice enough lag between when the book, when we read the books and then the movies came out that you were still surprised at some of the stuff that happened in the movies because you had forgotten that that happened. I'll never forget that very last one. There's this big fight scene and something happens and in the movie theater I was like, that didn't happen. This is this isn't right. This this can't happen. You can't end it this way. And uh, it was just, it was such a good reminder of how good the book series was. So Vampire Loves, if you like the vampire kind of stories, definitely if you like romance, teen romance is a good one. Um, it is darker. Really enjoy it. The other thing in Twilight is that there is a love interest, but there's really two love interests. So there's more of a love triangle going on in the whole Twilight series. You, uh, you know, you have Bella, you have Edward, and you have Jacob. 
and you have to figure out how this is all going to work. In every book, it seems like that it's it's different. It will it will switch what's happening there. So that love triangle is going on, and that's always an interesting element. One of the funny things I think about the setting in Twilight, in both the books and the movies, it's obvious that they are in Seattle, and then it's rainy and damp and dark all the time. It just, it, it feels like that. And uh, Mr. Lemon and I are watching Vera. It's a British mystery. And today we were watching uh, one of those episodes, and I said, doesn't it seem like it never, the sun never shines there? They're always wearing overcoats and hats and you never really see that it's raining, but it just looks like it should be raining. It's just damp and dark. And that is how the setting in the Twilight series is. It is set in Seattle. Isn't it called Forks? I think it's called Forks, something close like that. And all of the descriptions in all of the books are damp, dark. The movies, the whole soundtrack, the whole soundtrack is like, it's just dark. So those are the ones that we're talking about today. That takes us up to 45 book recommendations since we've been out because we are on day 45, counting from the Friday that we did not get to go back to school. I do include weekends because doesn't it all mix together? I feel like it does. So make sure you are going to your public library, either putting in your library card number or if you don't have one, Rest assured, I've, I've had to do it with enough to get a book from a different library. You can apply for a library card number online right now, and you can instantly go on and get ebooks, audiobooks. Remember, ebooks, you don't have to have a Kindle or some kind of tablet. You can read it in, um, on your Chromebook, you can read it on your phone. I have the Libby app and Overdrive on my phone. I can read the books on there if I want to. I can listen to the books on there if I want to, but that's how you can access books right now during this time. I know it's difficult. It's not as fun as walking into the library and walking down those shelves and picking out some books and us being able to talk about them, but right now it's where we are. It's the way that you can get it done. Remember to connect with us. I always, I'm very good at posting on Facebook because it's easy to link to all of that. But I also um, try and put stuff on the library website. I put stuff on the library blog, the book blog. Anytime I'm reading a current book, I put the review on there. Follow us on Instagram. Obviously, YouTube, which is where I'm putting these and then linking them to Facebook. Connect with us some way. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you like. I am happy to be your librarian. I want to uh, give you good book recommendations. I'm getting feedback from people. Like I said, I know that the comments are turned off in this because YouTube, because it's a video made for kids, they turn the comments off, but you can still email me at school. Um, under my school email, let me know what you're reading or let me know what kind of recommendations you need. I get a lot of those kinds of messages too where I read this, I read this, what else can I read? I'm happy to give you recommendations um, either back through email or putting them on the next video here. Uh, and again, let me know what you're reading. Bye.